Welcome back for another video. We're going to move forward with our Hello World project and we're going to show you how you can get your program to start remembering information. Uh, specifically what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at remembering numbers. Uh, to remember a number, most programming languages will allow you to create something called variables. So remember that's just a comment there in the gray. Variables basically make a little spot in memory. You get to name that spot in memory and what's it going to keep there? Whatever you tell it to. So let's just make one. I'm going to make a variable that can hold integers. So int for integers in Java. I'm going to call this number. I get to choose that name. Okay. And I'm going to set it equal to 7. That's basically the line. So the general format of this is what type of variable or what type of information are you trying to hold? I want to store an integer. Now, just a little refresher for those not great with their math terms. Integers are nice numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can even put negative numbers in there, right? Negative 5, negative 105, you know, negative a million. But what you can't put in an integer is you can't put 1.23. No decimal numbers. Okay? If you try to put a decimal in there, well, you'll see what happens. I'll just do it quickly there. 7.1, I get the red line of death there. Okay, and it even gives a little error. It says required integer found a double. That's actually a way that they call decimal numbers in programming. They call them doubles. And so no double allowed there. So integer number seven. What that basically does is somewhere in the memory of the computer, let's say over here, it makes a spot for a number, puts a seven in there, and the name of that spot in memory is called number. So now in our program, I can do stuff like this. I could say system out print line number. Okay. Now is this going to work? Well, let's give it a run. Right click, run. And it's a pretty simple program. Hopefully you follow. It prints, it prints, it creates the variable. You don't get to see anything for that. Right? That's just behind the scenes. And system out print line number and so that prints out the number in case you want to print out a little bit of text with the number I could put the number is and use a plus sign and the plus sign lets you join the variable with some text and so that's a line that does text and a variable and you can see when I run it the number there's seven and then there's a new line the number is seven not bad right now, are there other ways to make variables? Of course there are. I actually could have done this. I could have said uh, integer age. That actually makes a spot memory to store an integer. It's called age. And by default, default is storing zero. Okay, so there's a zero there right now. So if I actually printed it out, print line age, it should print out a zero. Now, this actually give us a little warning here. The compiler is saying to yourself, hey, you made this variable. It's never been set. I'm going to run anyways, see what happens. Okay, and it gives the error. So it doesn't like that. Okay, it knows you haven't set, and it gives you red lines of death when you run. Okay, these errors, you'll eventually learn how to read them. We're going to sort of pass by it now, but you know, you should read them when you have them just to get a sense of what it's telling you. So let's try this instead. Instead of the default zero, let's then just go age equals, I don't know, age equals 15. There go the red lines. You run the program and it prints out the 15, no problem. The nice thing with variables is they even let you do a little bit of math. So you can do something like this. I could say, let's make an integer. Let's call it answer. And let's say answer is number plus age. Okay, and you type it out almost like you just sort of read it out like English, right? Hey, make an integer called answer. And please set it equal to the number variable, which is 7 right now, plus the age variable, which is 15. So it's going to add those two up. And if you're good at your math, 
Let's do a little system out here, and you'll see that when we print this out, it should give us the right answer. And there's our answer is 22. Okay, so it's pretty good. Now, this basic math is not just limited to adding numbers together. I could have done this. I could have done multiplying. I could have done dividing. I could have done subtracting. And later on, what we'll show you is if you actually want to do more complicated math, there'll be a way to go math dot. And you can see here you can do sines and cosines and tangents and logs, et cetera, et cetera, your exponents, right? So you're not just limited to the simple, simple stuff. You can really do anything you do on your graphing calculator, your normal calculator. Just to give you one last example here, I'll just uh, call this integer stuff equals number plus 2 times age minus 5. Make sure all the brackets add up here. You know, divided by 7. Okay, I go to print out stuff. I don't even want to try to do what that does, but if we print out stuff, it is going to print out the right answer. And uh, for those that are good at math and have done that quickly in their head, you may be saying to yourself, hey, the actual answer is not exactly 9. We're going to talk about that in another video to come. There are some rules that come along with math. And so, you know, you have to watch that one because there are some important rules. Uh, the next video, we're actually just going to talk quickly about naming your variables. And we'll look at some other ways to store numbers as well. Thanks for watching.